Hi Virgo, welcome to September. This is Teresa from Caro by T. So this month, Venus moves into your sign on the 6th of September. Then we have a full moon in Pisces on September 10th. That's in your 7th house. Mercury goes retrograde right after that. Mercury is your ruling planet. So it's going from Libra back into your sign this month. Um, and then we have a new moon in Libra on the 25th of September. And we'll talk about all that later. Let's see what the cards say for Virgo. What does Virgo need to know about love and relationships this month? What does Virgo need to know about love and relationships for September 2022? What is coming up for Virgo? September 2022. The world. The Ten of Wands. The Nine of Swords in the past. The King of Pentacles, the Page of Cups, the Judgment, the Two of Wands, the Eight of Cups, the Justice card, the Knight of Swords, and the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, Virgo, so you're starting out the month with the World card. That's a great card. Um... The world card is everything is coming together. So you're coming to some type of completion. Um, you've put in a lot of work, possibly, in this relationship. You have this ten of wands. That's like carrying a heavy burden. And you can finally put the burden down. It's like you're at the end of all your work, all your hard work. And you're going to see the results of that with this world card. Um, and the world, it doesn't just cover relationships. It covers everything. It's like everything is coming together. You finish a project, you get your credit, you get um, good results. You might be uh, a relationship, your, your, your partnership is, you know, you're, it's like you're in the state of grace. Everything is coming together in, in a perfect completion. And um, sometimes the world means, okay, I've ended this cycle, I've completed this cycle, I'm ready to go to the next level. So for some of you, you might be thinking about commitment, taking a relationship to the next level. Or um, what's the next step? You have this Ten of Wands, so you have been working really hard. You have been carrying um, a heavy burden, but that's ending. So I feel like whatever's completing at this time, it's freeing you in some way so that you can move on and do something even better. You have the Nine of Swords here. So there's like this is the card of worry and stress, mental stress. You've been under a lot of mental stress in the past, possibly over a relationship. Um, and maybe even work stress, too. I think it's a combination of work and mental stress. Uh, a lot of what you're wor you were worried about with the Nine of Swords, sometimes, you know, you, we imagine, like, worst-case scenarios instead of wor worrying about, instead of focusing on what could go right, we focus on what could go wrong. Um, but I think that's in the past. And I feel like you're moving into a better future. You have the Nine of Pentacles here. You may have decided to start your own business. Um, or you might have started a new job where you're independent and you're, you know, in charge of something. You, you have a lot of freedom. So that part is good. If you're not in a relationship, sometimes the Nine of Pentacles, this is like the card of the entrepreneur. So I feel like you've, you've accomplished something of value and you're proud of it. And with the World card, it's like, why, you know, I should have done this early, like sooner. So I'm seeing some like career influences here, life path, in addition to romance. I feel like you're in a more stable place financially um, this month. But um, you may be feeling like, if you're not in a relationship, you might be feeling like, well, what good is having all this financial success, career success, if I don't have anyone to share it with? So you're going to want a relationship 
And I feel like you're, you've been going through some changes. And I think you can get your, you know, you, if you take action and if you, uh, you know, put some effort into achieving that um, goal, you can have that. And if you are in a relationship, I feel like something is coming to fruition or completion in that relationship. So it could be that you've worked hard on the relationship and now you're experiencing a better connection or um, you're ready for commitment. That could be possible too. Um, you have this King of Pentacles in the recent past. This could be like an earth sign. You also have water with the Page of Cups, air. I mean, actually it could be anyone. But the King of Pentacles energy is someone who works hard for their money. And this could be your energy too, where you're, uh, you just want to provide for your family. So you've been working hard at your career and so that you can show your love by, okay, I've got this job. I can now, you know, we have a house, we have food in the bank, money in the bank, food on the table, you know, and that's how the earth signs show their love is through material things. Like I'm providing you this life, you know, of security. Um, so you may not be you, like, you, you know, Virgos are very down to earth. All the earth signs, you know, you want, you like stability in relationships. You're practical. Um, you want someone that you can count on. Now you have this page of cups coming up in the future. This is a card of, it could be a child. Um, for some of you, you might be thinking about, okay, now that I have more stability financially, maybe it's time to have some children. But it could also mean a message of love that's coming in. So maybe you're wanting to express your love for someone. You know, if things have been going well you're, with a relationship, you might decide you want to tell someone how you feel. Maybe you want to commit to that person. It could also mean someone expressing their love to you. You might hear, like if you're dating someone, someone may tell you that they really care about you. Um, because the pages are like, it's kind of like new energy or immature energy. If you're dating someone, there could be an age difference. The judgment is here in the near future. The judgment is about rebirth and waking up and deciding to make it, to take action. So if things have been stagnating in a relationship, you might decide to um, make some changes within yourself. Like you're working on yourself so you could be a better partner so that you can make changes um, and take action and make changes in your life. There could be a partnership. You have this two of wands here. It's in your fear sector. So you might be trying to make a decision about a partnership. Like I'm not sure how this is, where this is going to go. For some of you, especially if it's a new partnership, something you've just started, you might be kind of like, playing a wait and see, like, let's see where this goes. You have the potential to partner so with someone this month. And it could be, it could be romantic, but it could also be a business partnership. Um, some kind of work uh, project that you're partnering with someone and you're going to just see where it goes. In your environment, you have the eight of cups. So this could be, you might even be deciding to move away from one thing that was once good and is no longer fulfilling and move on to something better. Like you're looking for meaning in your life. And I feel like, I don't know if that's actually leaving a, a relationship as much as it is maybe leaving a job or, or a path that you've been on because you're, you're searching. Could even be wanting to move to a new location. I feel like, cause like with the world card, that's about world travel. Um, if you're getting a new job, it could be that you're traveling more or you're wanting to a new you're wanting something new. You want it to be in a new environment. So for some of you, you could be ending a relationship and moving into a new relationship, leaving something behind that's no longer working, moving looking for something that's a better fit. Because I'm seeing like old and new energy. And for those, um, it could be a new relationship. If you haven't, if you don't have a relationship, it could be that. You're leaving the past behind and you're searching for something new that's going to be more meaningful. You have the justice here. Um, there could be some legal situations that need to be worked out. So if you're leaving a relationship, there could be some... I feel like things are going to be... Uh, it'll be a fair ending or a favorable ending or a favorable decision will be made. 
um, if you're like if you got some court case in the works. Um, this is a card of fairness, of um, balance. It's also a card of karma, karmic reward for the energies that you've put out in the past. So I feel like um, if you've been working really hard toward you know making a relationship work, this could mean like okay, maybe you, like if you struggled in the past with difficult relationships, maybe now it you know you can connect with someone that you could really have a good relationship with. Or you can make your current relationship better. Um, the F Knight of Swords is the outcome. So I feel like this energy is impulsive energy, reckless energy. You could have been dealing with someone who was very, um, a little bit selfish or a little bit um, insensitive. Like they, they just wanted to have their needs met. And they didn't care about what other people... Like, they weren't aware of how their actions were affecting others. So that could either be you or the other person. But I feel like um, the, the Knight of Swords energy is someone who's always looking for a fight. So if you were in a relationship where there was constant fighting, you might decide, you know what, I can't... I don't want to fight anymore. Let Maybe we're just not right for each other. And some of you might just be moving on away from that. Um, on the other hand, the Knight of Swords is saying, don't jump into something without checking it out first. Don't be too hasty because there could be some new influence coming in and you're going to feel like following that path, you know, thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Um, so just check out. Don't, don't do anything hasty. Um, take your time. Give the relationship time, especially if you just met someone. If you've been in a partnership for a while, that's different. You may want to make a commitment. But if it's somebody brand new, you may want to give it some time before you commit and just make sure that this per that you're not doing something, um, you know, just haste too hastily. And you want to, you know, get to know that person a little bit more. Because I feel like there could be some feelings of love coming up. And, um, like, especially if you've ended a relationship and you've met someone new, you could be in that transition phase where you think oh this person's my love my soulmate and you want to commit and then you may find later well I rushed this too much and now this person's not really right for me so just take your time let you know let time go by until you're really sure that the relationship is for you because um, I just feel like that hasty action is like a warning don't do anything in haste don't do anything as a reaction like if you get mad at someone and you're just like well Screw you, and I'm going to go with this new person. You know, you want to be, make, um, make um, strategic moves, not reactive moves. But for the most part, I feel like you're leaving a troubled, something that was troubling you is ending. Something where you were, that was on your mind, a lot, maybe some guilt, um, some worry. That's coming to an end. And you are moving on to something more meaningful. Things are going to start to improve, especially because you've been working on yourself. And you are changing. And because you are changing in inside, um, the things that you're, that you're interested in, your needs are changing. So you may not be interested in the same things that you were in the past. And you might be having new, uh, wanting different things. So, but in any case, it's going to be on you to make these changes. Because the judgment is about being the agent of change in your life. Realizing what you need to do to make changes. You're not sitting around waiting for change to happen. You're taking action. And you're going to make things, you know, things are changing in a good way, though. I feel like you're, as long as you're, you're finally not wasting your energy on a toxic situation or wasting your energy on something that's not right for you, you're making the decision to change. Um, and it's not just the other person. It's like you're changing, too within yourself. So the changes within yourself are changing everything that's happening outside of you. Um, if that makes sense. So let's see what the angels have to say to Virgo. What does Virgo need to know from the angels? What message does the angel have to say? Do the angels have to say? Opportunity. Okay. 
Wondrous possibilities and opportunities await you. Stop dwelling on past mistakes. Surrender the past lovingly. There is nothing to regret. All is always in perfect and divine order. Everything that you've ever experienced has helped you in some way. The past is behind you. The path ahead is clear. Move forward joyfully and fulfill your heart's desire. So yeah, um, the worst is over. You're moving ahead and you're moving up. That's the most important thing. Um, so look ahead with positive energy. Look for opportunities for growth and abundance because it's, it's on its way. Okay, so the full moon in Pisces is happening in your seventh house. And it's conjunct Neptune. So Neptune in the seventh can be tricky. On the one hand, it can make you think you met your soulmate. Oh, this is like my dream lover. On the other hand, there could be some, you know, fantasy involved. We're not seeing the person clearly. We're, you know, or you're attracting someone. Uh, so that's why I'm saying give it time. The sun is in your first house. The moon and Neptune. Trust your intuition. But don't jump, don't make any hasty commitments. Something may be coming to completion at this full moon. But um, let someone, if someone is new in your life, let them prove themselves to you. Um, sometimes full moons can bring endings or completions. So if you were spending a lot of time with a relationship where the person was very needy and you were trying to help them, because, you know, Neptune can sometimes attract people who have drinking and drug problems or psychological problems and you're trying to help them and, you know, you're, you're sacrificing a lot. That may come to an end. Um, the square is with Mars in the 10th house. Um, the 10th house, Mars in the 10th is career. So you've been focused on career. You might be trying to balance, you know, your career responsibilities with a relationship you know, something, a relationship, maybe you've been trying to, you know, deal with relationship issues, trying to work, get ahead in your career. You're re really busy at work. So there's a little bit of conflict there as you're trying to juggle that. You're, you're juggling a lot of projects with Mars and Gemini. Um, now, the positive thing is um, Uranus. The moon is sextile Uranus in your ninth house and the north node in your ninth house. The sun is trining Uranus. So you can have an opportunity for travel, or you can have an opportunity to go back to school, learn to pick up some new skills. The ninth house is about teaching, learning. Uh, maybe you're, if you're either teaching what you know, or you're taking a class and learning some new skills so you can advance in your career. You could also be dealing with foreigners, um, taking planning a trip abroad, um, planning some kind of communication project that deals with global reach. Um, your belief systems might be changing. You could be meeting someone who is very different than you culturally, and they're changing the way you see the world. Um, they're changing your belief system in some way. Um, Mercury, which is your ruling planet, is in your second house in Libra. So it can bring ideas on how to bring in more abundance. Um, you may have to negotiate some financial situation. There might be some negotiation going on, where, especially with your career. Um, if you're, especially if you're starting a new job, you might have to negotiate salary. Mercury's going to retrograde. So, and when it retrogrades, it'll go back into your first house. So you may have to redo something. You may have to rethink, um, especially if you're thinking about starting a new job during the Mercury retrograde period. You may have to renegotiate a contract. Don't be so quick to commit during the retrograde period. Maybe if you can hold off and wait till Mercury goes direct in October, because there might be some things that you don't, you're not seeing right now that may develop later that you would say like, well, if I knew this, then I wouldn't have signed this contract or I wouldn't have taken this job. So it's, but it's okay to go back to an old position or go back to working with someone that you worked with in the past. Um, that's okay. Or go back and tweak your resume. If you're looking for a job, now's a good time to like update your, your resume, your social media, whatever, and start planning, your, make a strategic plan. Um, Mercury is great for that, especially because when it's in Virgo, it'll be in your sign 
you'll be really, it'll be giving you a lot of ideas, a clear head. Now, Mercury is strong in Virgo. So you won't have like confusion. You'll be um, thinking clearly. Venus is going to be, is in Virgo. It moves into Virgo. It's crossing your ascendant this month on the 6th. So it can bring a new love relationship. When Venus is in your first house, you're looking good. You're more charming. You're more outgoing. If you're not in a relationship, it could bring um, a flirtation or a new partnership possibility. Um, you have Jupiter in your eighth house. That's the house. Uh, you know, it's bringing abundance and financial support from others, maybe a partner. Saturn is in your sixth house, so you're working really hard. You've been working really hard. And you want to really make sure that you're not overdoing it, because Saturn, you may feel like a slave to your job. Like, oh, I'm just working all the time, and I'm just exhausted. So you have to have some work-life balance. Set some boundaries there. Um, let's see, where is Uranus in your chart? Uranus is in Taurus. So it's in your ninth house. Um, Saturn is squaring Uranus, and it, it'll be even tighter at the new moon in Libra. So you may be thinking about, you want to break free of obligations, and like especially if you're overworked. You may feel like, I need to get out of town. I need to make a, take a trip somewhere. I need to recharge. Um, so you may feel like, or you may feel like just going off in a new direction, taking a new career path. And you might be thinking, like, I want to train for a new skill or a new career because I can't, I feel like a slave in this job. I'm not making enough money or whatever. Some of you might be thinking about that. How can I um, expand my reach? Or how can I broaden my horizons? So then we have the new moon in Libra. And that's happening in your second house of money. And that is, it's going to affect your, it's going to hit your, the, this new moon is making an aspect to Mercury, Venus, and Pluto as an out of sign aspect. Because it's two degrees Libra and all these other planets are in the late degrees of, of Virgo. So before it becomes the new moon, it's the moon is going to hit Mercury, then it's, it's going to hit Venus, then Mercury. It's going to trine Pluto, which is in your fifth house. So if you don't have a relationship, you could very well start one at this new moon. You have an opportunity for a new beginning. And this relationship is not only going to be, it could be a business partnership too, because it's affecting your seventh house and your fifth house. It could be a romance but it's also affecting your second house of money and self-esteem. So whoever you're connecting to, whatever partnerships you're forming, whether it's romantic or business, it can lead to more money or more security, more financial security. And especially with Jupiter in your eighth house, that's bringing abundance in, like you're getting financial support from others. So that could be from a partner or some type of partnership, um, an inheritance. You might be getting a windfall of money where you could pay off some debt or, you know, it could be taxes, you, you know, you might have some tax uh, refund or something. Some, some money is coming in from a source other than your income. Um, it could even be a, a lottery winning or something like that with the 8th house. But there is abundance with Jupiter in the 8th house. And Pluto in your 5th house, that's transforming your relationships with your children. It's transforming. It can bring a new powerful romance especially because Venus is trining Pluto at this time, and you have this new beginning. Um, whatever you're cooking up, it has the potential to bring in wealth and abundance and to transform your life in some way. Mars is trining Saturn in the sixth at this point. Um, so you're really feeling ambitious. You have a goal you want to achieve, and you've got the energy to, to put yourself out there. So you could get some type of promotion or some type of change in your life path. That's going to bring you, uh, like, maybe even a greater commitment. Um, you're going to be seen as someone who's a take-charge person, who's who gets things done. Um, very active. It's a very active time. Now, you still have Neptune in your seventh house, so you want to make sure that your whatever partnership you're forming, especially committed partnerships, that 
you are seeing them clearly, that you are see, ex, you know, looking at them. You know, even ask someone else's advice, like, what do you think of this partner, especially if you're starting a new relationship? What do you think of this person? Because they may see things that you can't see because you're in love or you're idealizing someone. Um, and especially in business, too. Make sure if you're signing any contracts, especially because Mercury's going retrograde, check all the details, check all the fine print. Don't sign unless you know exactly what you're committing to. But other than that, I think this is going to be a very energetic time for you. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of new, a lot of transformation, a lot of changes, and it's the potential for abundance, uh, financial abundance, and love. Um, it could even be that you're connecting with someone from the past. So someone may come back into your life because the Mercury retrograde sometimes brings people from the past back into your life. And so you can, you know, make things better the second time around. And um, so that's something that you could that could possibly happen also. Just make sure that you're seeing everything clearly, that you're not idealizing anything, and that you're prepared to do the work, and which you are, earth, earth signs. I mean, Virgos are very industrious, very, um, you're not a slacker at all. <laughs> um, so I see abundance coming, especially if you're moving into, moving away from something that has been draining you. And um, moving ahead with hope, and, and and you're definitely love is definitely on when Venus crosses your ascendant. Venus moves into, you know, crosses into Virgo. Um, just get ready, be ready. You could be um, have an opportunity for love. But like I said, um, don't jump in. Don't do anything hasty, because of all this retrograde energy. You want to take your time and really think about what you're doing. Don't do anything um, unless you're absolutely sure you've checked all the details. And that's my forecast. Um, but I feel like you're going through some major changes and changes for the better. You're becoming empowered. You're stepping into your power. So that's my forecast, Virgo. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. Leave a comment if this resonated with you. Uh, it's a general reading, so it may not resonate with everyone. But um, if you want a specific reading based on your specific situation, click on the link in my description box. It'll take you to the website and um, we can, where you can purchase a reading and we can get you on the schedule. And then um, we'll, we'll just be working together. So in the meantime, thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, thank you for your support. I wouldn't be here without you. Have a wonderful, oh, in September, you might even be having a birthday. So happy birthday in September. Enjoy September and all the new beginnings that are on the way to you. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye.